So this morning I, um, I want to talk about our, our priorities for 2018 and, and probably just try and crystallise the things that, that Mark and Sue have been talking about over the, over the last couple of weeks. And I want to particularly again, Sue just laid such a, a brilliant foundation two weeks ago and I know that Jeff has sold out of Sue DVDs, but he'll make some more. You've got a few more. There's, there's at least 20 or so that, that have gone. And so encourage you to get that DVD. If you didn't hear that, I just felt just kind of a little bit it's, it's, it's online as well. So kind of really, I think, is a kind of a bedrock for, for where we are at the moment, but also where, where God is taking us. And so I want to I kind of work with, with what Sue laid a couple of weeks ago also Mark sort of teased out a little bit further last week and gave some more, more meat to that. And then I basically want to restate what I believe God's saying to us in, in three different ways. And uh, I pray that one of those ways you go, yeah, I can, I can connect with that. And so it's not so much about laying out uh, a grand vision or a grand plan, but, but actually saying, God, what are you saying to me? And how, how, do I, how do I fit into the scheme of things in terms of what you're doing with us as, as a body? And just want you to reflect a little bit about our, our journey over the last couple of years. So last year, really, we used the word transition. We're not using that word anymore, right? But we had the, the picture of, of the metamorphosis that was happening. We were in our little cocoon, but we're no longer there. We're no longer in that place, but right now we are just ready to bust out of our, our cocoon and, and to discover who we are and what we are and, and what God has called us to do. And so we're, we're this fledgling little butterfly, if you like, trying to, trying to push our way. So what is that? That's, that's a wing. Like, but what do I do with this thing? You know, that's another wing. What do I do with that? How do these two things kind of work together? to allow me to do what I've been created to do. So we're in this phase of, of just kind of tracking with God, saying, God, how, how does this all fit together? And I've got good news for you. We don't have a clue. Right? But we know it comes together. I was watching this little documentary on TV the other day, and it was about the, the building of a, a big jumbo jet. Kind of really fascinating. And, and one part of the workshop was like they would build the engine and the other bit they were kind of building the, the body and another bit they were building the wings and another bit was kind of doing the, the undercarriage and the wheels. But there was a moment where it all came together. It was like no one knew what anybody else was doing and all the electricals and the wiring looms and, and everything that makes an aircraft work. Just a massive process. But the, the designer had it all, and the, 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 head, the head builder just said, right, we're going to bring this all together. And, and within a couple of weeks, this, this incredible aircraft emerged. Now, we're not there yet, but we're in this place where there's bits and pieces happening, and in, in time, we're going to get the picture as God starts to, to put this thing together for us. You know, this, this, this thing called an apostolic hub. What is it? What is it? What does it look like? How does what he's given to us differ from what he's given to someone else? And it's only as we start to kind of step out and try some things tentatively saying, all right, oh, Lord, we're feeling this. Let's give this a go. And we, and we, so we're in, we're in God's workshop right now. He's, he's putting us together, starting to put some structure into to where we're going and what he's called us to do. Okay, Jeanette, we've got, I think... So I want to talk about the priorities for 2018 and, and what I've just kind of done here is basically restate what, what Mark and Sue have shared with us over the last couple of weeks. And Sue said that the three keys, we've been talking about these three keys for a little while, worship, prayer and intercession. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig down a little bit on those later as well. But Mark said, I just find it really interesting. We said, alright, that's... That's pretty basic Christianity right there, isn't it? It's pretty elementary Christianity. But I think 2016 or 2017 was a wake-up call for the church. Where our nation 
is heading, all the decisions that we make out of our control, so to speak. But I find it interesting that this wake-up call to the church, we're not the only church feeling the burden to pray. Yeah. We're not there on our own. As Mark shared last week, the Assemblies of God around Australia have called a month of prayer and fasting. There's another group that's called February the 10th, on the 10th of February, but also with an extended period of prayer. And so if you, you, you listen to what's going on around you, there's, there's the church, God's church, not just Frankston Life, we've been called to prayer, worship, and intercession. No, His church has been called to prayer, worship, and intercession. His church has been called to seek His face like never before. And so if you keep your ears open for that, saying that this is not just a, an idea, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's as basic as basic can be, right? Read your word and pray. But it's like, how have we let go? How has this happened? Because we haven't. We haven't. We haven't been diligent into what God has called us to do. We haven't been diligent in, in taking our authority. We haven't been diligent in being watching on the walls. We haven't been diligent in standing in the gap. You know? And so these keys now are pivotal to how and when we move forward. And so, as I said, it's not just us, but right around the nation. Keep your ears, there's all these groups now with a, with a passion and burden to pray. So, Mark kind of articulated this last week. So, one of our clear goals for the very first part of this year is to establish a house of prayer and an office space to have a clear direction by our birthday at the end of February. So, so we've given this a very specific timeline. We're saying, God, you've called us to pray. We need a space that we can dedicate to prayer. And so this has been a long-standing prophetic word as well. We're saying right now is the season for this thing to emerge. And so we see the end of February. So I want to encourage you in your own personal prayer life. Let's pray. Say, Father, what does this look like? Where is it? And we're going to walk this journey together. So it's a bit of an adventure because we have no idea. But it's good. We want to build an effective intercessory team. Now, the wheels for that are in motion, right? We, we prayed for Dorothy and her team at the end of last year. But a whole bunch of you say, I'm, I'm in. I'm behind you, Dorothy. We're going to pray this thing into existence. And so that's that's happening. The other thing that we're really passionate about, are to engage the Franks and Ministers Network in regular prayer and support them in pursuing the kingdom mandates on their churches and helping them have a bigger vision for the city. So we, 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 we're pulling the ministers together. We're going to start, we're going to have monthly prayer meetings kicking off, kicking off in March. You know? so, so it's going to, be, going to be awesome. So every month, the ministers of the city. So we, we're driving that, we're pushing that, we're praying into that, saying, come on, guys, let's pray. And so as a church, we encourage you, just don't like, this is something that we're doing. This is like, we need you. We, we need these men engaged. We need God to say, come. Be part of the citywide church and to start to get a vision of what we can do corporately and collectively in terms of bringing transformation to the city. To activate the intercessors of the city of Frankston. So that's a, a little bit bigger then. So we we'll start with the leaders and then hopefully we can bring the body together. We've had a few kind of prayer meetings. We've done two of those a year for the last couple of years. Corporate, big large corporate events. We want to really connect with all those that want to pray. So, second thing, part of the vision, to become apostolic hub. And Mark, Mark spoke, shared from that last week. He shared some prophetic words that I hadn't even uh, heard for from Russell Ames. So I thought that was all new to me last week. I thought, wow, isn't that awesome? Because, again, we just think, oh, this is God's... No, no, God's, God's actually already spoken some of it 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. They're going, but we're living in the fulfilment of those things. And so over the next few weeks... We're going to, again, just the little declarations that we've been having. We had one declaration a week. We're just going to put it up on the screen before the service. Say, God, we're believing you for this. We're going to declare this. We're going to come into alignment. We're going to come into agreement with the prophetic promises. And so that is the prophetic promises. And the third thing is to contend for the supernatural. And these things all go hand in glove, right? So we're going to leave that, leave that there. 
I want to talk about, uh, let's go back, all right, let's go back. I want to focus for a few minutes around, around missions, the second, the second point, becoming an effective missions hub. And the thing that continues to amaze me is that there are, there are people in this room, there's whatever, there's 60 of us in this room, there will be over a dozen of us that have a very clear missions mandate, a very clear missions call, be that, be that locally, you know, Jim's out on the, on the streets doing things on a Friday night, there's others that have got passions for, for nations, others passions of cities, others have passions for people groups, it might be young people, it might be young women, it might be young men, doesn't matter, but there's a clear missions call on your, on your heart, something that, that's been sitting there and it's just not going away, it doesn't leave you, it keeps you awake at night and say, God, I'm just praying for these people, I'm just praying for these people, I'm just praying for this nation, I'm just praying for this church, I'm praying for this city, and so we want to step into becoming this effective missions hub. Prophetic promises, we're in our little chrysalis, we're bursting out, and now we're saying, well, what does this thing look like? So we want to work strategically with nations and churches to assist them step into their God-given destinies and mandates for their own cities and nations. So that's, that's the heart. That's the heart of what we've done in Thailand and the heart of what we're going to continue to do in Thailand. And we've got three couples there now. Leaving that base, and I've been speaking with Moraine on a regular basis. He's so looking forward to being here, hopefully in four or five weeks' time. But these three couples are pivotal to that. We're reproducing ourselves. We're not out there going, we're going to, we're going to win me and Mark. There's no way no one will win me and Mark. No way Mark will win me and Mark. But if we get alongside these three couples and say, guys, the things that God has entrusted to us, the things that God has taught us, the things that God has shown us, we want to, we want to give that to you. We want to impart that to you. We want to encourage you that, you know. So we've got, you know, um, where are you, Helen? That's right. So Helen going to feed G in a couple of weeks. You know, so we've got Cal with Carol. Awesome. You know, we've got people just back from Vanuatu, you know, Philippines, India. So there's, there's all these people just with this passion for missions. And so we want to try and help facilitate that in some constructive fashion. And so one of the things we want to start to do this year is, is everybody with, with that sort of heart. Now, that can be local, be international, wherever you want, we want to start to, to bring you together on a bit of a regular basis. We're not going to have coffee, but just to share what's, what's God talking to you about. What's, what's he saying to you right now? And, and actually walk a journey with you. So rather than people out there doing their own thing, which is cool. It becomes an expression of the life of Frankston life. It becomes an expression of the things that God has entrusted to us. And I want us to look for a few minutes in the book of Acts, chapter 13 through to 20. We have Paul's three missionary journeys. And I want to, I want to look just briefly at the characteristics of an apostolic missional sending center. What does that what does that look like? So in Acts chapter 13, the church at Antioch decide to call a prayer meeting, Dorothy Wayne. They decide to pray. The church decides to pray. What do they pray? They say, God, what do, we, what do you want us to do? You birthed us in Jerusalem. We're now here in Antioch. What's the next thing? And so, good idea. Let's pray about it. And what happens? In the midst of the prayer meeting, it says the Holy Spirit speaks and says, separate all of us. Pretty radical move for its time. You guys had to go. And it says they, they travel. They travel from place to place. We won't look at any of these. Only you can read the seven chapters tonight when you get home. But they travel from place to place, preaching the gospel, healing the sick, raising the dead, 
getting persecuted, getting stoned, getting beaten, getting whipped, getting put in prison. It's pretty cool to have had. But it came out of hearing God. It didn't come, Paul just didn't say, I've got a great idea, Barnabas. Why don't we why don't we go to Rome? Why don't we go to Ephesus? No, it came. It was birthed out of out of prayer. And so worship prayer and intercession isn't isn't just a nice little catch cry that we're just going to throw on the screen every Sunday. It's something that we actually want to put into practice and we want to operate in terms of, God, I want to hear you before I go anywhere. God, I want to know this is you before I do anything. I was talking to some tune the week. Then. What's God saying? I said, well, to be honest with you, at the moment, God's just telling me to stay put. I've got invitations everywhere, but I have no... Desire to go, passion to go. I have no, 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 nothing in me that says you've got to go. And so, even in the trips of that, I'm very careful to say, God, I don't want to be somewhere where you don't want me to be. You be in the wrong place at the wrong time without God. It's a scary place. But if you know if you're in the right place at the right time with God, well, that's. That's when you're going to step into the miraculous. That's when you see the angelic. That's when you're going to see the healings. That's when you're going to see the transformation of people's hearts and lives. And so, worship, prayer, and session. All right, I've got, I've got a clean canvas. I have a whole year ahead of me. And you're not giving me any release to go anywhere right now. Isn't that cool? That's really cool. And some of you have got burdens, places, and as we get together, you say, hey, I'm really going, I'm feeling to go to Madras this year. Well, instead of you just going to Madras or Pakistan or wherever, we get together and pray. And we say, hey, Dorothy, do you hear anything? God, God's going to confirm this to us. And we, we get a sense, you yeah, know, this is right. But Dorothy, don't go on your own. Take, take someone with you. You know, who do you have And so we start to we start to actually engage and, and, and pray into that. And so we start to develop teams that go out. So is that just like teams? We might go for a couple of weeks, we might go for a month. Oh, we might have spent for a few years. Now what happens? So flip forward to the end of chapter 14. It says, they did this big trip and they come back into Antioch. What do they do? They started to share with the church. This is what happened. This blind man saw this guy got healed. That person got saved. We saw this. There was a church planner. We appointed leadership. And, and so the circle is complete by coming back into the hub and saying, hey, this is what happened. We give him glory to God. And what does that do? That then encourages the rest of us that have stayed behind. So we're here praying. But it's good to know that my prayers have been answered and, and, you, and there's all this fruit from your journey. There's this. And so the traits of an apostolic mission center is that there's this sense of accountability. There's this relational thing. So it's not just people going off on their own. And I want to tell you, I've done enough missions trips now, there's enough cowboys out there that, that honestly, they don't need more cowboys. It's, it's so sad. There's another cowboy. At his own, on his little soapbox, doing his little thing, but God ain't called me to do that. There's no reason for being there other than, oh well, I make myself important by standing on my soapbox in the middle of the mill or wherever you happen to be. But the reverse is also true. If you're sent, if you have people beside you, if you're walking in a line of day, Helen's going to feed you. Helen, we're going to support you in prayer. And Helen's going to feed you. So suddenly there's a need, suddenly there's a crisis, suddenly there's something. You flip back at texts and emails and say, God's going to pray for us soon. And this is the thing that I was last year, last trip, is, is as I started to 
engaged with people that were praying, suddenly there were answers coming back, not, not within weeks, but within moments, within days. There was, there was a response from the Spirit. And, and that's exciting. Because you know it's not, it's not us, guys. We're nothing. Nothing we can do. And so we want to start. I don't know what it looks like. Um, but in the next few weeks, I'll call a, a bit of a gathering. And we might just go to a coffee shop and just have a, have a chat over coffee. And just talk about missions. Just talk about the stuff that's on your heart. The, the nations that's on your heart. The area that's on your heart. The people group that's on your heart. Whatever it is. We start to talk, we start to go along together. The other incredible thing, you know, we, as we look into this New Testament apostolic heart, said there's, there's, there's an alignment of, of purpose, there's a, there's a commitment of relationships. And that where this is an expression out of, out of Frank's life, out of what's happening here, what God's doing in our, in our city. But then there's, there's issue, right? There's issue, there's conflict. I love, I love the fact that the Bible never hides stuff. It never sweeps stuff under the carpet. There's a, there's a disagreement that's come. There's a, there's a, it says that there was a, a full-on punch-up in the middle of the missions team. Well, how does that happen? We're godly people. Good ain't the big pool got involved in the middle of the stash. It's like, this guy, John, he let us down. I'm not, I'm not having him part of any team that I'm part of, you know. So, what about the, And there were other issues that, that read their head. What they do, they, they went back to Antioch, they discussed it, and they go, this is over our pay grade. We need to go back to Jerusalem. And so they go back to Jerusalem. And they tell, they tell the leaders there, this is the issue. They're wanting these guys to get circumcised and on they go. Yeah. But there's this sense of connectedness, there's this sense of relationship that's continually there. You, you watch it. They didn't have email, they didn't have Australia Post. But there's this sense of connectedness. You look at Paul's letters and you look at you look at the passion that he has for the Ephesians, the passions that he has for the Philippians and the Colossians and the Galatians. This man. And so, you know, when you when you when you hear, you know, I'm talking to Helen, you know, you I hear you talk about Prada or Prada, what's his name? Prada Prada? Prada, Prada. I don't even know his name, you know. But there's a there's a passion in here because Helen's been going there for, for 10 years or more, 20. So there's this connectedness that, that comes as an investment in relationship. And when we talk about Ulrain and Kalu, those are good, you know, there's an investment in relationship. There's, there's passion. And we, we love those guys. Like, you know, and so looking forward for you guys to fall in love with them as much as, as we are. You know, and, and I hope maybe in the next year or two you'll come with us and visit them and see what God's doing there, you know. But there's passion there. And if, if I talk about my friend Bond, you know, there's, there's passion there, that, that church there, that, you know, even recently, you remember when I went six years ago, they got washed out by a, by a storm. Well, they got, they got washed out again, just recently. The good news is he's, he's almost finished his building six years later. He's got a concrete one, and so he's lost a bit of stuff, but his building's intact, you know. But there's, there's passion there because there's, there's investment of, of relationship. Yeah. You know, I've been up there as a young couple that I just love, and they've asked me to come and be part of their wedding, and I thought, wow, what an awesome privilege, you know. And I wouldn't do that for too many, but my friend Frankie is just the most amazing little guitarist. He doesn't even own a guitar, you know. And, and yet he's got this incredible gifts on his life and, and marrow the kid. And I fell in love with these guys seven years ago when we led worship together and saw God come in and bring on a conference. And, and so there's this shared journey. Getting off the track. 
But you're getting the half right. It was, it was this investment of relationship. It was the investment of, of accountability. It was the investment of, of prayer. And so as we start to tentatively take some steps in terms of becoming an effective missions hub, it's about relationship. It's about, it's about saying, hey, Annie, we're going to support you. you know, we're, going to, we're going to pray. We might, we might always have hundreds of dollars, but if we can pray, we can pray. If we can pray, then we're just going to see things happen that we would never have seen because we're standing with you in the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's go. I've always got more to say, but I'm going to So, our priorities for 2AF. I'm going to restate it. A slightly different way and move into an area that, that Mark so sort of touched on last week. So this is restated. Prayer, worship and intercession is about the call to intimacy. And, and the call to intimacy is, is our ability to hear God's voice with a little greater clarity. And, and so if we can want to become this missional hub, now, our ability to hear God is, is going to be pivotal. We don't want to be doing things that are dumb, stupid, irresponsible, but even if they look good, we know uh, this is not what we say. And we, we, we can say no, he's not saying no. Sometimes the very thing that looks appealing is, is actually second best God looks like that for us. The call to wholeness. So I've kind of aligned these things with the stuff that we've been talking about. The call to wholeness. What has the call to wholeness got to do with being an effective mission hub? It's got everything to do with being an effective mission hub. Because as I said, there's too many cowboys out there doing their own thing. Their own lives are so messed up. And they're sharing their messed up junk to a people that are messed up, making them even more messed up. And, and there's all of these, all these incredible wacky doctrines and things going out there. And so as we, as we go out, it's important that we, that we start to walk in wholeness. Now the crazy thing is, I'm, I'm nowhere near whole, right? Is there anyone with me? No, no you're all good. I know you're all good. We're all, we're all together. I'm, I'm pretty messed up, right? But one thing I do know is that if I look back over the last five or ten years, I'm in a lot better place now than I was five or ten years ago. And so it's that, it's out of that that I'm sharing, and it's, it's out of that that God's week comes God starts to breathe on the stuff that I've been doing. Because it, it resonates because it's real. I'm not talking theology, I'm not talking theory, I'm talking something that I've lived and something that I've walked through. And something that I was still continuing to journey. And so Mark started to share that last week, you know, and if you remember what his message was, that that that, that sense a call to wholeness is such a such a cry for the church today. I look at I look at the church sometimes and I'm not even just being with my daughter for a couple of days and she was telling me some stories and she wasn't back and I thought, wow, how how on earth can you call yourself a pastor? How on earth can you call yourself a man of God and treat people like that? It's just like this calmness. And so, so if, if, if we're going to do missions, let's, let's do it out of a sense of being Christ-like and, 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 and shining His light and, and shining His love and, and letting that flow out of us. Now the trouble with the call to wholeness is, is that it, it threatens us. Because everything within us wants to say, I'm okay, Jack. When it's clearly evident things are not okay. And I think, you know, if we look at my own life, you go, you know, I'm, I'm okay. And then something you go, no, I'm not okay. And so it's this journey of actually uncovering what's not okay. I had this really cool conversation with my sister about a week or so back, and uh, she started to share what God had been doing in her life. You know, and 
she uh, she predates me as a guitarist. You know, she was, she was a really good little guitar player. And I'll give her, just one day she just stopped playing. And I wonder, one day she stopped playing. And I thought, it me? And she didn't pick up a guitar from this stage to the next. So about 12 months ago, she gets this prophetic word. And uh, so that God wants to do a healing in your life. And she looked at me and said, God said, I'm okay. I'm not sick. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm fine, thank you. And that's the way most of us are, you know. It's like, just very surface. Don't, don't think too deep because you don't want to know what's inside you. And she started to share with me, and she said, you know, I don't know it. it's my reaction. And God started to speak to me. I said, ah, oh, that's, just got that off the table. What's that, what's that, what's that? What's that? There's, there's anger in your heart. Fine. So fine. And it, it, she starts to share the story. It's, it's like she, she made this inner vow. She got, she got angry. She was upset. She was hurt. She was disappointed. She said, never, never find a guitar again. And, and for the next... 35 years, you've got picked up a guitar. Like, like God's, God's got a number, right? And he said, I'm not going to land you because she's got this incredible call in her life. She has a passion for, for the indigenous community like, like no one on earth. You know? And she just loves it. And so I said, but I'm also interested in making you whole. I'm also interested in making you whole. And been through some, some healing, she's prayed through prayer, she's getting a little bit of counseling, which is not a bad thing either sometimes, you know, some people's prayer ministry is good. I don't, I don't want this thing in here to stop me from stepping into the fullness of everything that, that God has for me right here. And it's, it's like we're so eager to get out of our cocoon and our little Christmas and all the, all the deep Popple's eyes and goo that is in there. You don't want to take that with you into the next season. You want to step into the next season free from bitterness. You want to be free from judgment. You want to be free from anger. You want to be free from jealousy, from disappointment, from, from, from the stuff that's gone through you in life. You know. But the trouble is most of us go, well, I'm okay, Jack. I just bury it under the carpet and pretend like it never happened. My tent never goes away. Whether you, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, it will not go away. And it will fester there. And it will poison everything that you try and do for the rest of your life. I can say that because I've walked it. And if I, if I was to get you to stand in the, in the mirror right now and look at yourself in the mirror, and give yourself a prophetic word. I'm looking at myself in the mirror. Luke, you need more healing. And I could do that, I could do that for each one of you. And I'll never be a thousand percent accurate without even having an inkling of being prophetic. It's just truth. It's just truth. Because we've all been through stuff. We've all experienced pain. We've all experienced loss. We all, you know, can recognize anger when it rises up. We can all recognize jealousy when it rises up. We can all recognize bitterness when it rises up. But it's, it's our choice as to whether we choose to recognize it and call it for what it is. And then begin the journey and say, okay, I recognize that's bitterness, but where's that coming from? Well, back there. There was unforgiveness in your heart. Back then, there was a judgment against the leader or a situation that happened, and this, this thing of bitterness started to eat you away. And it's going back there and saying, God, forgive me. God, cleanse me. God, make me whole. The call to wholeness. We're running out of time. 
the cool go, the need for the supernatural. So there's no point in going without the supernatural. And I know the difference. I've been, I've been out there when there's nothing happening, and I've been out there when everything's going on. I think I'll share, I'll come back from my last trip. We were just having coffee. We were just sitting around in a restaurant, and whoa, that presence of God would just come as we sat there and we talked over a meal. We weren't praying, we weren't worshipping, but God was in the midst of our problems. That's supernatural. When you get the senses of it, it's a big angel standing on your shoulder, and everything that you're saying is just hitting the mark. I know that, and I know it's not me. It's, it's the Holy Spirit working in me and through me and just allowing me to be that conjunct in the moment. And so as we press in as a church, we are not going to major on this, but as the year goes on, we want to contend for supernatural manifestations. We want to contend for angelic. We want to contend for healing. We want to contend for seeing people's lives change, for people set free, people come into wholeness. And you know, it's not psychology that isn't going to do it, guys. A guy like, guy like Michael, you know, we all know Michael. The reason he keeps coming back is he knows we love him, you know. But honestly, patting him on the back, and, and he needs an encounter with God that I can't give him. But what happens if that guy got so impacted that he stands here in his right mind and he's testifying about the goodness of God in his life? Then people sit up and take notice of all his little mates on the street. Wouldn't that be awesome? See, that's the sort of stuff we want to contend for. We want to do it out there, but we want to keep it real. We want to keep it real as well. You know, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a end, you know, one or the other. It's a both. It's impacting. So what's God saying to you in the midst of all that? You call the intimacy, your ability to flow in the supernatural. What's he, what's he challenging you with? See, because this, this vision, as I said, it's not like we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna grow a church to a thousand in the next twelve months, right? It's not we're gonna build a big building. And we're going to fill it in the next five years. This, this stuff is, is about our hearts. And we've been called to be a movement of garments. This is the fluid. It's, it's about a movement of people that are connected at the heart, that are walking the journey together. They're so that so apostolically aligned. We're walking in the same direction. We have the same passion for our city. We have the same passion for our nation. We have the same passion for the nations of the earth. But what's he saying to you? you know, just, so this is the third way of restating it, okay? So number one, word flow. The word flow. What's God saying to you in your, your ability to flow in the supernatural? Your ability to flow in the prophetic? Your ability to, to hear God's voice and to move in the gifts of the Spirit and to be a blessing in people's life. Your, your ability to be intimate with your Heavenly Father. Flow. Everything comes out of flow. Everything. Revelation comes out of flow. Revelation is not studied in a book. It's not worked out. It's caught as God reveals things to our hearts. And so as we get into worship, prayer and intercession, the outflow of that is revelation. And so I don't know about you, I want more revelation, I want more understanding. I'm going to read books, I can study, but man, when God gives you something, it's like, wow. That's too clever for Luke. You know? It's too clever for Annie. It's come out of Annie's mouth. How does that happen? Because God wants to use Annie, see? He wants to use my fellows. He wants to use travel. But it comes out of, out of flow, out of our relationship, our intimacy with Him. Tongues, dreams, interpretation, all come out of flow. And I want to encourage you guys to press in, you know, for two more. We've, we've, you know, the church is kind of meandered here always now. Acts 2, they will wait. Jesus said, before you do anything, 
you get joy and you power. You get to intimacy. You get the power. You get the world turned upside down. Now. You try and do it any other way, and you're asking for trouble. Flow. Grow. When I say grow, I'm talking about that heart stuff that I was just talking about. So there's the call, there's the call to intimacy, and as, as, as we're in that place, we'll find he starts to talk to you about what's in the here. And it's a choice, you know, it's a choice. You say, well, you know, I ain't done that. That, that leader, the way he spoke to me, that pastor, the way he, I ain't done that. Well, that's, that's a choice that you, that you make. At your own, at your own peril, Satan, what could be that you, you, you cut off so much of what God wants to do in your life, unless you're prepared to grow emotionally, physically, spiritually, become totally. Oh, Mark and I were having a good chat. Like, it was good last night, Mark. I enjoyed last night. I mean, he took me to, to come for a drink. So we just went to the Groove train and had a nice coffee. So, but we had a good rave about stuff that was going on in our orbit. You know, so he was saying last night, he said, you know, there's our spirit man that's totally whole and wonderful. But our, our soul is on this demanded issues. And, you know, a lot of a lot of Christians live this this well, you know, schizophrenic lifestyle. So I'm in the spirit and I'm out of the spirit. And when I'm in the spirit I'm awesome, but when I'm out of the spirit I'm, I'm pretty awful. But what what God's wanting to do is, is actually for the for, for alignment to come between our spirit man and our soul man. So that doesn't matter. There's people see there's a, there's a whole, there's this congruity there. I can, I can love. I can give. I can be forgiving. I can be caring. I can be kind. I can be generous. Whether I'm in the spirit, whether I'm out of the spirit, because these two things are so alike. And it's only as, as we allow God to grow us. And I'm not. I'm not sitting here pointing because I'm, this is this is me. I'm talking to myself. But I just want to. I just want to continue this journey because it's too exciting not to. So I've seen. I've seen the fruit of it, and I know there's more fruit to come. But it will only come as I flow and want to grow. The final thing is go.
I pray that you've caught something this morning. You know? I pray you've caught something. I desperately pray that you've caught something. And it's not about it's not about anything I've said, but what what is your heavenly Father saying to you? The really cool thing is he, he works on multiple levels. Because I know, I know we all need to improve our flow. I think just God, I just want to consecrate my life afresh. Seek your face afresh. Lord, I want to, I want to continue to grow. I don't want to live with anger, with bitterness, with jealousy, with resentment. I want to be more effective in my garden. Going out, I'm coming in. In the supermarket, in my school, in my workplace, all the places that I go. I want people to see someone whose spirit man is in alignment with their soul man. And as a Christian at work, as a Christian at home, it's not someone different every day of the week that depending on who he's with and what he's doing. But there's a consistency in our lives. And so, Frank's the life, fledgling apostolic heart. We're on a journey together to discover what this thing looks like. How it all fits together, I don't know, but I know it's going to be amazing if we can get the foundations right. And so, Papa, right now, I just want you in your own seat, just talk to God for a few minutes. Just keep playing, Jim. It's not stuff that I'm going to fix necessarily. It's a journey that's to be walked.
I thank you, Lord God, for the victory that you won in heaven for us. Lord God, you tell us that we overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Lord, this morning, we thank you, Father, that you called us to go. You called us to grow. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, you called us, Father God, to flow in the presence of God. I thank you for the anointing that you have given you've given to your bride. And Lord, this morning as we as we go from this place, I, I just thank you, Father, that this is the season of collaboration. And we invite you to do exceedingly abundantly more than we ask or even imagine. And everyone said, Amen. I want you to go and find someone. And I want you to give them a high five, a low five, or a high five. Thank you.